So is he still relevant or is it just an old has-been that's on its way out? Let's talk about it. Welcome back, everybody. Today's video is inspired by a lot of comments and questions that I've received both on this channel and also in my classes. Comments from people who love C or like C or people wonder why we have to learn C. But in both cases, people often wonder, is C getting too old fashioned? Is it on its way out? Are we still going to be using it in five years? Is there any point in actually learning this language? So I thought today we'd talk a little bit more about C, some of the reasons to love it, some of the reasons it can be frustrating for people. And hopefully by the end of this video, hopefully you'll have enough information to come to your own conclusion about whether or not C is a language that you should spend your time learning. Today I'm going to be talking mostly about C, although a lot of the gripes and complaints and issues, a lot of this stuff is relevant to C++, and I have in other videos talked about the C versus C++ debate. That's not really what this video is focused on, so check those videos out if that is what you want to talk about, as opposed to just C's relevance. And I also want to preface this video by saying that I'm not a language purist. I do make a lot of C videos on this channel, and I'll get to the, some of the reasons later on in this video, but I'm not a Langit, and I'm not even sure that's a word. But I guess the point is, I've never really found one language that solves all of my problems or fits all of my needs. I have a lot of different languages in my life, and I love each of them just in different ways and for different reasons. And of course, as beginning programmers, I encourage you to learn a bunch of different languages. It will broaden your perspective. It will help you understand how computers work better, It'll make you more productive, and just a better all-around programmer. Trust me. Now, before we get too far into it, I do just want to thank everybody who helps support this channel and a request that if you're finding this content to be useful, please do support the channel in some way. Help out in some way. It helps me keep the cameras rolling. It helps me keep doing what I'm doing. So if you're liking the videos, like, subscribe, buy merch like this. Support the channel on Patreon where you can get access to source code and my monthly office hour. You can also check out my online course. But anyway, thank you for helping me do what I'm doing. Now let's get on with the rest of this because this is a video about C. And so let's first start talking about some of the reasons why people find C to be frustrating or difficult. Basically, what are the haters saying? Well, basically the complaints are going to fall into three main categories. The first is it's old. The second is it doesn't have a particular feature or maybe multiple features that you want. It doesn't have feature X, whatever X happens to be. And number three, I hear people say it just takes me longer to do things in C than it does in Ruby, Python, JavaScript, or some other language. And every one of these concerns is true, or at least partially true. Now, I want to talk about the first one really quick because it is true, but not very helpful. I mean, C is an old language by programming language standards, but hating on something just because it's old, well, that seems kind of silly to me. And interestingly, this is actually the most common gripe I hear. Students are they're basically saying, isn't C just a little dated? You know, it's a little, little out of date. But it's interesting, a lot of times when I say, well, it is kind of old, tell me what it is you think is out of date. A lot of them then struggle to really put into words what it is that they don't like about C. They're just concerned that something old might not be good. And I think that's kind of lame. So I'm not saying you got to love C by, by no means, but let's get beyond its age. Let's see if we can dig just a little bit deeper. Because let's face it, there are a lot of things in this world that are really old and really great. But now if we do want to dig deeper and we want to engage, let's let's look at some of the features that C is lacking. So this is the second point. And with C, it's true. There are a lot of things you don't get. You don't get type safety. You don't get classes, inheritance, generic data types, language level exception handling, garbage collection. And all of these things are sometimes really nice to have. There's a reason why other languages have added them. And there are times where we definitely miss them when they're not there. And for a long time, a lot of us used to say, well, that's just the price of being lean, mean, very efficient, which C is, but I don't even know if that's necessarily true because you do have new languages like Rust, and I know a lot of you are waiting for it. I am going to at some point do some Rust videos. I'm going to get to some of the Rust content out there. I just haven't found the time yet, but Rust is definitely trying to move in in this space and trying to be a lean mean systems language that is very close to hardware, very little overhead, and also have things like type safety. And personally, I find Rust really exciting. I'm interested to see where it goes. And like I said, future Rust content definitely in this channel's future. But yeah, so there are feature concerns is definitely an issue that comes up a lot. There are things that are just missing from the language and that can at times be annoying. So now what about gripe number three? And that is just that it takes longer to do things in C than in other languages. Now, this is not universally true all the time, but it's often true. And to illustrate this, let's look at two different example programs. This one is a network client that's in 
implemented in C, and this one's a network client implemented in Ruby. And it doesn't take a lot of deep analysis to tell you which one of these took me less time to write. So often this gripe is valid as well. So, okay, so with these complaints, why do I continue to make C content? Why do I continue to use it in my classes? What's the point? And is the clock ticking on C? Is it on its way out? Okay, so now let's talk about the upsides. The first, which I've kind of mentioned already, is that it is fast and lean. It's lightweight. There's not a lot of junk that gets stuck in there. There's not a lot of extra cruft. So your programs are going to be lightweight, they run kind of everywhere. They're from supercomputers down to really, really tiny microcontrollers. C pretty much works everywhere. It's fast and it uses very few resources. So when you're in a situation where that's important, it's really important and it's a great tool for it. It's not always gonna be the case. Sometimes you're just like, look, I can spare a few cycles if it saves me a lot of time and that's true. But for example, on my embedded microcontrollers, often I'm dealing with very, very slow, very small memory footprint processors. And often I really wanna control control everything that's going on. And so I often stick with C or C++. And I know some of you Rust enthusiasts out there are gonna be like, yeah, but you just wait. At some point, you're gonna be doing all of this in Rust. And maybe that's true. Maybe if we look forward a couple of decades or something, maybe all of my embedded work is going to be done in Rust. I look forward to finding out. And who knows, maybe as I get more experience with Rust, I'll start to migrate that way. So there's definitely a familiarity aspect within this whole argument for me. As you know, C, I'm more familiar with, so naturally I gravitate that way. But but as I dabble more in Rust, I could definitely see maybe some of my work moving in that direction. And that leads me to the second reason that I think C is really important, and that is it is foundational. And I know, I know that's what old guys always say when they wanna stay relevant is I'm not just old, I'm foundational. But seriously, there is so much that is written in C and it's pretty much available everywhere. I mean, I may be using Python today for some project, but let's say that I wanna do something that has to be computationally really fast. So maybe some kind of uh, linear algebra stuff. Maybe I'm using the NumPy library to compute some stuff, to do you know, a bunch of large matrix multiplication or whatever. If we look under the hood, all that really fast linear algebra stuff is implemented in C or C++. Now, of course, that also could eventually change. Maybe 20 years from now, all of the under the hood stuff, all of these building blocks that have to be really fast, maybe they're all gonna be written in Rust. And if that happens, great. But for now, that foundation is C. And so understanding C and being good at C is actually really, really valuable. So that's reason number two. Now let's talk about the one that I actually think is probably the biggest reason that I really like C, and that is that C has outstanding educational value, in my opinion. Now, why is it such a great education language? Well, the first is that it is simple. It's a simple language. It doesn't have a lot of extra features. A few of those features, like pointers, especially function pointers, do sometimes give new programmers a bit of a headache. But the point is, is as a language, it's pretty simple. In fact, you can learn the whole C language pretty quickly. You may not be really great at using that language, but you can learn it pretty quickly. Now, on the other hand, I find when I am using other languages, regardless of what those languages are, languages with a lot more features, I spend a lot more time in the class helping students understand the language itself rather than the topic, you know, architecture, operating systems, whatever that I'm trying to teach. So if I use C, I spend more time teaching the content for the course and less time explaining features of the language. And I think that's a good thing for me and for my students. And of course, all those features that we talked about that C doesn't have, well, the fact that they're not there and you have to do a lot of these things yourself, that helps you better understand how computers actually work. I mean, I can demonstrate things in C, and you've seen some of those on this channel that other languages simply won't let me get away with. And all those demonstrations may not follow recommended best practices, and they may not be something that you would want to stick into production code, do an actual product, but they are incredibly valuable valuable teachers. And I'm sure I'm leaving out some good ones. Please do drop down in the comments if there's something about C that you love or hate or whatever. Just let us know how you feel about C. And I hope that helps you see that while I don't know the ultimate future of the C programming language, and while it is still old, and while it's missing a bunch of features, and while it might even take you a little bit longer to write something in C than in some other language, I do think there's still a lot of value in learning C and using C in your classes. I'm going to keep using it in my classes where I teach about embedded systems and operating systems systems. I think it's a great language for helping you understand how low-level software things work and in doing so to help you become better programmers. So I hope that helps. I'll see you next week.